our view on investing in markets such as this, we bring in Jim Rickards. He is the author of The Death of Money, which is a great read if you haven't read it. He is the chief global strategist at West Shore Funds. Jim, so glad you're here. When you, uh, I saw yesterday all those right on the screens, I thought, I need Jim. We need to talk <laughs> about what's going on. So for the average investor, let's start small, then we'll go big. What's the average person to do? Okay. Here's the way to understand what's going on now, because you hear fears of deflation, fears of inflation. F. Scott Fitzgerald said the sign of a first rate mind is the ability to take two opposite ideas and process them at the same time. We have deflation. It's natural because we're in a depression. Depression doesn't mean declining GDP. It means below trend GDP. So if trend is three and a half or potential is three and a half and you're actually doing about two. So you're saying are. the U.S. is not growing despite what GDP prints no, show. We are growing, but we're growing below potential. That's okay. what a depression is. So potential is three and a half and we're growing two. That's depressed growth. That's a depression. So we're in a depression. We've been in since 07. We're going to stay in it indefinitely. That's naturally deflationary. But the Fed has printed four trillion dollars of new money, which is inflationary. So think of it as a tug of war. There's a deflation team pulling this way. There's an inflation team pulling this way. And it's going back and forth. So the markets go down. It's like, oh, gee, deflation's taking over. And then Bullard comes out and the market goes up. Oh, gee, here comes the inflation. Me, I just, but we have both. What that's do you think thing. about Bullard's comments? I mean, I've seen some people say, honestly, that's irresponsible because he doesn't vote. So, I mean, we did see the markets, whether you think it's responsible or irresponsible, they did move markets, his Look, comments. I've spoken to Bullard privately. He's a very smart guy. I like him a lot. But the market should just, they're going to finish the taper. It doesn't matter what Bullard says. So that's exactly right. The FOMC is in the grip of the Hawks right now. There are vacancies on the Board of Governors. You've got two super Hawks, Fisher and Plosser. They're going to finish the taper and they're not going to change policy before the end of the year. But in January, everything changes. Fisher and Plosser come off. Evans and um, uh, Williams of San Francisco come on. They're both super doves. The president will fill the vacancies on the Board of Governors. Yellen will have her feet on the ground. You're going to have a much more dovish board. So we're set up for QE4 in 2015. No rate increases, by the way. I forget. So that. QE4 is coming in your view. Yes, but a different kind of QE4. And here, here's the difference. QE2 and QE3 have failed. By the way, everyone talks about the taper. QE1 was tapered 100%. QE2 was tapered 100%. What we know about tapers is they fail. The, the QE3 taper will also fail. Why will QE4 be different? Because they're going to dis intermediate the banks. The problem is the Fed prints money, the banks sit on it, they don't lend it, people don't want loans. So you need to take the banks out of the picture. The way you do that is... Well, I want to stop you though right yeah. there because in some respects the business community has taken a lot of power away from the banks. I mean that's why we're seeing a lending club. I mean there are tons of peer-to-peer -peer lending, small business lending. I know size-wise it doesn't compare to the power that a JPM or a Goldman would have. But there's a peer-to-peer -peer lending arrival for those reasons. Right, but it doesn't have the same leverage as the banking system. And we're not getting the velocity. There's, there's some of that. There's some stuff going on. But the, the way to make QE4 effective, and I look for this in 2015, is basically by taking the banks out and tax cuts. This is helicopter money. The way you do it is you cut taxes, probably the payroll tax. It puts money in your pocket, in my pocket, in everybody's pocket. That increases the deficit. The Fed issues treasury bonds to cover the deficit, and the Fed buys the bonds. So the buying the bond part is the QE4, but now you take the banking system out, and you put money right in people's pockets. It's also going to fail because people don't want to spend it, but that's what they're going to do. All right, Jim, I want to ask you a few follow-ups on what this means for spread risk, what it means for the credit markets, because it's very much related to review on investing in markets such as this. We bring in Jim Rickards. He is the author of The Death of Money, which is a great read if you haven't read it. He is the chief global strategist at West Shore Funds. Jim, so glad you're here. When you, uh, I saw yesterday all those right on the screens, I thought, I need Jim. We need to talk <laughs> about what's going on. So for the average investor, let's start small, then we'll go big. What's the average person to do? Okay. Here's the way to understand what's going on now, because you hear fears of deflation, fears of inflation. F. Scott Fitzgerald said, the sign of a first rate mind is the ability to take two opposite ideas and process them at the same time. We have deflation. It's natural because we're in a depression. Depression doesn't mean declining GDP. It means below trend GDP. So if trend is three and a half or potential is three and a half and you're actually doing about two. So you're saying the U.S. is not growing despite what GDP prints no, show. We are growing, but we're growing below potential. That's okay. what a depression is. So potential is three and a half and we're growing two. That's depressed growth. That's a depression. So we're in a depression. We've been in since 07. We're going to stay in it indefinitely. That's naturally deflationary. But the Fed has printed $4 trillion of new money, which is inflationary. So think of it as a tug of war. There's a deflation team pulling this way. There's an inflation team pulling this way. And it's going back and forth. So the markets go down. So